every economic change, points in a positive direction, as long as we view the matter over a reasonably long period of time. Now, here it's important. For proper understanding of these matters, we've got to look at a long time span, not just at a short time span. And we've got to look at the aggregate picture rather than this group versus that group. That's where our thinking gets into trouble. We compare this group to that group, somebody's got to be doing worse. Or we look at a short period of time, and over a short period of time, things do go bad for a while. So we've got to look at the longest span and look at the whole picture. So again, every trend in material human welfare has been getting better rather than worse. And as to the future, you ask, would I bet on it? The answer is, yes, I will bet on it. Now, make this offer to any prominent doomsayer. You pick any measure of material human welfare. You pick any place in the world, any country. You pick any year in the future, starting, say, 10 years from now, so there's time for things to happen. And I'm prepared to bet that that dimension that you pick, that aspect of human welfare that you pick, will show improvement relative to now and not deterioration. Now, before we go on, let me give you the theory of how this can possibly happen in a nutshell. And I'll repeat this theory later on. The theory goes like this. You have more people, you have higher income, and that increases the demand for resources. Increased demand for resources means higher prices, either actual or expected. Now, that's as far as the Malthusian theory goes. But the economy doesn't stop there. What happens is that these expected higher prices represent opportunity. They represent opportunity to businesses. Businesses say, aha, higher prices, greater opportunities for profit. I'll get to work and see if I can find some way to increase my supply or find substitutes or whatever. It also represents opportunity for scientists who say, here's a chance for me to make a discovery that will help humanity, maybe even get a Nobel Prize for, for it. So that's the theory. But <coughs> one more bit. So people go to work looking for ways to fill this opportunity. Most of them fail. They don't find solutions to the problem. But they pay the price themselves. Eventually, some people do succeed in finding solutions to these problems. And the extraordinary part is that the solutions that they find leave us better off than if the problem had not arisen in the first place. And that's the entire history of humanity. That's how come we are better off than the people who have gone before. Problems for a while, eventually the solutions, solutions that leave us better off than if there had never been problems. For scores of thousands of years, human beings have tried to fight against death and failed mostly. All of a sudden, we succeed. We've almost completed the conquest of premature death. Now, I would expect lovers of humanity to be jumping up and down with joy and saying, we won, we won, we won. We, we performed the miracle. Instead, what we have instead are people with their hands saying, we've got a problem. And this is a very peculiar interpretation. Now, if there were such a thing as overpopulation, or increasing overpopulation, or growing population pressure, what would we expect to see? We'd expect to see people eating worse, not better. We'd expect to see them living less long rather than longer. So we're seeing the opposite. We're seeing the opposite signs from what growing population pressure would imply. We're seeing more food per person. We're seeing longer life per person the opposite of what you would expect if there is something called growing overpopulation. Not that things are good, but they're getting better. And that's a very important distinction, because if you think that things are getting worse, you tend to say, let's do something about it, and let's do something about it usually means let's get the government to do something about it. But if you recognize that things are getting better rather than worse, then you're not so likely to call for the intervention of the government in our business. Also, I'm not saying that a better future is going to happen automatically. It'll happen because people will address these problems with their muscles and with their minds, and they'll almost surely overcome, as 
we've mostly overcome in the past. But it doesn't drop from heaven. It comes from human effort. The extent to which the political, economic, social system gives people the freedom to be able to expect that they will be able to enjoy the fruits of their labors. Freedom from the gov government coercion, which might simply take away from them the benefits of their labor. So we give them the incentive. Economic freedom gives people the incentive to go to work on our problems and their problems. And the key elements of such a framework are economic liberty, respect for property, and fair and sensible rules of the market that are enforced equally for all. Now, that shouldn't come as news to anybody because Adam Smith knew that, David Hume knew that, the great thinkers of 200 years knew that. But we are finally getting back to that now, and we now have lots of statistical evidence showing that indeed economic freedom does lead to better results. So, adding more people causes problems, but people are also the means to solve these problems. The main fuel to speed our progress is our stock of knowledge. And the breaks on our progress are, first of all, lack of imagination, and second of all, unsound social economic regulations of these activities. So our ultimate resource is people, spirited, skilled, energetic, hopeful young people who are endowed with liberty, who will then exert their wills and their imaginations. They think for their own benefit, but inevitably they will benefit not only themselves, but the rest of us as well. Thank you. I'm going to use the moderator's prerogative and ask a question. Julian, why are you wearing devil horns? <laughs> ah, obviously that's the way that um, many people see anyone who suggests that things are getting better rather than getting worse. Uh, people have the idea somehow that if you say that things are getting better, you are doing bad things by preventing people from being properly frightened. It's the idea somehow that being scared by forecasts of bad futures is good for us. Now, I will agree that forecasts of bad things that are indeed likely to happen to us in the future are good for us. But forecasts that we know to be exaggerated or false are something else. So in some ways, I'm trying to get one step ahead of them with the, with the horns, David. All right, the front row.